Hi everyone, welcome back to Lead the Standard. I am Kelly Taylor and you are tuning into episode 26, Trends, Insights and Career Opportunities for 2025. Oh my gosh. Um, I am here as always with the very insightful Jackie. How are you doing today, Jackie? Good, thank you. Thank you for saying I'm insightful. Some would <laughs> question that. Look, I, I do sometimes, but you do the same to me. So we're <laughs> between us, there's, there's always something to talk about. Um, <laughs> now, it's November. Um, I know you and I are definitely feeling that end of year rush and that bit of a, but it is time to start getting ready and thinking ahead to 2025. Um, so apologies for that little PSA to anybody like me who has not even considered that Christmas is approaching. Um, I don't, I'm in a bit of denial there. Um, but I do know that I am, I am head deep in strategic planning here. Uh, and if anyone's listening today, they're probably doing the same if they haven't done it already. But this episode is going to be packed with some really big changes and opportunities on the horizon. I said last week I was excited and I think that was a little bit of an understatement. Um, <laughs> Things emerging in tech, in auditing, in training, sustainability, uh, major revisions in a few ISO standards, and um, obviously that strong push towards ethical business practices. Um, but we're not just going to be talking about predictions today. We're talking about what could shape your next career move, um, the tech you'll need to master, how to position yourself for success in that fast changing space. Um, I said, really excited. So, Jackie, let's just jump in and have a look at how 2025 might just be the year that our listeners redefine their ISO careers. Jackie, what are you most excited about trends for 2025 and not surprises it has in store? Well, I do. Well, I'm going to say it generically. I mm. like. I like change. I know mm. it's weird, but I actually, yeah, I get excited by change and new things. So possibly if I was going to answer that, that's it's all of it and, mm. and that's without giving away um, the, the, I think there's four key areas that we're talking about um, with the 2025 trends. But I think change and being ahead sort of yeah um showing that yeah innovative side being the first and I, I suppose I reflected on this uh when I wrote the original newsletter around the 2025 trends and by the way there is a pod uh sorry a webinar coming up on yes. the 15th of January which yes. Kelly will put in the notes that you can register for where I'll go into these trends a, a bit more that, and you can come along and ask questions, of course, because, yeah, this is really exciting because it's change, it's, it's being able to be at the forefront of things and be that thought leader and get out in the front of it, embracing it. And when I look back, it's really something that I've always done, weirdly enough. Um, I actually didn't realise it, to be honest. Um, like, like really it started, say, oh, with me starting, you know, getting rid of my salary job and going, you know what, I'm going to do something different. And um, initially, yeah, I did auditing, consulting and training. And I know with, with the training, it was a huge change because it was in the classroom then. But something that comes with change is that fear, isn't mm -hmm. it? And I do, I do remember feeling physically sick before. Yeah, before yeah, my, my first, first training. Yeah, I was my first classroom. I was the cool. same. Yeah, and even though I know that I. I practiced, I practiced. Now I don't practice because I've done it for so long. I just come up with it as I go. But, you know, and this, well, it's actually a really good point. When anything's new, it does take time and it's really yeah. hard to get your, your head around. I started, I've been talking about writing a book for years. I actually yeah. started this week. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
So I actually started it this week and I've booked in for a two-day um, boot camp in March next year where I'm going to pull it all together and then so hopefully around this time next year it it will be ready to purchase. But it's hard because it's mm. new. I had to learn new ways of doing things and it's once you get started then you start to get comfortable. So yeah. that, that's what I mean with change. Like you can't, as long as you're excited by that change, obviously, um, yeah. you know, and if you have some degree of control over it, obviously um, I did I did read something many, many years ago, change is all right if you're the change er, but not the change e. Mm. <laughs> so I suppose <clears throat> it's got to do with that control. Um, Something else I thought of that, uh, you know, we've embraced with something new is actually the, I don't know, the evolution, the release of auto training online. Like auto training online was the first exemplar global training provider to launch fully online learning, fully online. We were the first ones to figure out how to do it. Yeah. Okay. And then since then, obviously, yeah everyone's followed particularly since 2020 which was a the catalyst with the pandemic but we were already fully online um and then most recently oh well we've also introduced the our ai sidekick um yeah. as well who's who is talking like it's a real person <laughs> who's sort of within our training content and then you kelly and um christine updated our website um chatbot yeah. recently and that's all that's ai true. um yeah. their name is alto so you know we're embracing that technology and as you know i wanted to be the first i like we need to you know i'm not one of those people that just go like oh i'm not trying that i'm you not don't trying like that version 2.0 yeah, I, you know, and well, as you know, I am send stuff in Slack all the time. Oh, check this out, check this out, check this out. So I love trying new things. Hot tip, my favourite AI thing at the moment is napkin, napkin.ai. Oh, my gosh, AI. I using that too. Yeah. I love napkin.ai. <laughs> I'm going to our secrets out. Um, it's, it's amazing. Um, and then on a more personal note, um, for me, and again, this is, being the first again is that I have created JackieStapleton.com. It feels weird talking about some something that's got my name in it, but it's not me. Um, <laughs> it, well, it is sort of. So I'm I'm the first. So ISO professional, ISO career strategist in this space. Okay, I've been doing it for people. And hundreds of people over the yeah, many decades, I've been I've been doing it and helping people with their careers and moving forward and doing zooms with them. And then I realised, whoa, maybe we should keep this quiet too. Um, <laughs> no, I just realised, <laughs> but you know, people can steal your idea; they just can't implement it the way that it, that, that you have. It's only one Jackie. No, but, and that's that's. That's true. It's the same with becoming an ISO consultant. Like there's lots of ISO consultants, but nobody can be you, okay? Mm. It, inevitably there's going to be other people that come out after me and um, chase that market around that ISO career expert or ISO career strategist. Um, it's going to happen. But once again, um, yeah, I'm, I'm the first. There's no, there's no other. There's generic career what are they career coaches but mm. my um i suppose the beauty with what i'm doing it's specific to iso because Finish. that's that's what i know and that's what i love so i suppose that was a long way around sort of getting to the point of what i'm most excited about i think that was your question <laughs> it's changed 2025 is is already here, everyone. We've, it's, we've I know. <laughs> it's change. So yeah. I will I will break down what my research has discovered mm -hmm. for the 2025 trends and those that 
I feel have some pull um, and, and interest, okay? But before I do that, I want to share, I suppose, why this is important and why this is important for us as people that work in this ISO industry. You know, you and I are both driven by it and influenced by it. No matter what your role is in the ISO industry, um, these figures that I'm going to share will will influence, um, you know, how successful we are and, and where we're heading. So um, I think in the newsletter there was a, a – I did quote a couple of different reports, but I'll just share one with you just, just so I can get to the nitty-gritty. Um, <laughs> there was a report that I found um, on fact.mr. Um, another hot tip for an AI program is it's called Perplexity. And perplexity um, is all about getting you these analytics and statistics, and it goes out to the, um, the the websites, the pages, and it includes the reference, so you can all, you you double check um, where they're getting it from. So I I love perplexity, um, and it's good at collating a lot of stuff together as well, um, because obviously some some um, I suppose stats aren't just in one report, it's in many. So yeah. then it pulls it all together and you can create in napkin.ai your own little infographic. Um, but it could actually have come from five, six, seven sources. So perplexity is a really good tool as well, just as an aside. So <laughs> what I found in this report was that the market, so the market, this ISO certification market, because that's really the driver, it's estimated to reach, and this is US dollars, 16.14 billion with a B, billion this year in 2024, okay? But they're saying by 2034, so in another 10 years, they're expecting it to climb to, again, US dollars, bit over $66 billion. So it's still growing. So if you're not embracing change now as someone working in the ISO world, maybe, I don't know, I'm going to be brutal, maybe it's time to retire. And look, that's something you might consider. I'm going to consider it in, in a few years. Um, but also, the other thing to consider is, oh, crap, I need to get onto this stuff and really see, yeah, how I can embrace it and how um, it's going to influence what I do and how I can influence it within the role that I have in this ISO industry. So that's huge, isn't it, Kelly? That's ridiculous. I cannot fathom those numbers. It's crazy. And yeah. such a short time. Ten years is not a long time. It um, isn't actually, is it? No. So I think they were saying that's like a 15.2%. Yeah, yeah, 15.2%. That's a compound annual growth rate. So that's that's mass, massive, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. so I know you like me to get to sh short answers and I'm we're getting there. Today. <laughs> I'm getting there, okay? So... Just I suppose before I get into the nitty-gritty of what these trends are, the job market is obviously going to, if not already, exploding with opportunities, okay, driven by those massive numbers I shared with growth in the industry, um, driven by these changes that I'm going to share with you for the 2025 trends. So taking that into consideration, companies, businesses need people, experts who can take on ethics, social responsibility. I'm giving you some hints now. People who understand um, any changes in the quality management um, area, any ISO professionals, um, who have a knowledge or can lead sustainable business practices. That's a big change with ESG sort of coming into the picture a lot more as well. And, of course, the big game changer is technology. It's changing everything. So 
we need people in this industry who not only understand the ISO standards, but the digital tools and AI for auditing and compliance, conformance, you know, inspections, et cetera. So whether you're into the technical side, sustainability, ethical business practices, honestly, there's never been a better time to be, most exciting time, okay? Mm -hmm. So the key to getting on board with this is staying flexible and something I always say, keep learning, open mindset because this industry is changing fast like a lot of other industries influenced by these changes and honestly there's new opportunities you know every day every week every year so yeah as i said if you're not on board either retire or start or start you know learning pull yourself into into the into the the future oh oh i like that yeah Look, um before we do get into the nitty gritty, you've talked a lot about change, a lot about tech and these words for those people who may not be ready to retire, as you just said there, <laughs> that is very scary. As we talked about, like I remember my very first classroom training as well. I was physically sick to the point that I had to say, can't make it. I'm, I'm that, um, that mm -hmm. nervous. So, but I put on my big girl pants the next day and went ahead and did it. Um, it was fun. It was terrifying, but I made it. Um, I think tech really does scare a lot of people in this space. And before we delve into it, because there might be some things that people are a little bit worried about, don't be. There is always someone there that is going to be able to show you. Tech is there to help and support us. And I know a lot of people are scared that tech is going or AI is going to take their jobs. AI is a tool to help you do your job better. It's not there to replace you. There is always going to be the need for a human Amen. intervention, cross-check, et cetera. So everything we're talking about today is an opportunity, whether the ch you are the changer or the changee, because sometimes the changes that happen to us actually are better than the changes that we make. Mm -hmm. mm. So, yeah, I think everyone should really embrace all of the things that we're um, talking about today. And as you said, if, if there's any more questions that come from it, please, the webinar um, we have in January, um, we'll have that link here for you to be able to register with um, and we can talk about it more there. So I just wanted to kind of, before we get into there, don't be scared, embrace what we're about to talk about. It is Absolutely, really important. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good reminder because I know, you know, when ChatGPT was first launched, I don't know when that was. Was it end of last year or the year before? So much has changed since ChatGPT Ch Ch oh, changes yeah. every day. So, yeah, don't don't be afraid that, yeah, no. again, everything's going to change. Yeah, it, they're just tools. All they are are tools, okay, and um, they make you I, – I cannot imagine how I would do the work that I'm doing every day here with Atoll without the support of these tools. I don't, mm. I, I I could do it, but it would take me, I don't know how much longer, 10 times? Yeah, easy. Yeah. Easy. And frustration, there'd be tears. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I can't do this. I need yeah. ideas. It's like having someone, you know, especially if you're working remotely, it's like having someone in your office that you can shoot ideas off. You yeah. know, it's just giving you ideas. Look, for that exact purpose, I'm going to throw Christine out there today. Christine has actually built a relationship with her chat GPT account to the point that they she converses with it by name. And, yep. like, it, it, think about it that way. As you said, yeah, it's a, it's a colleague, not... Um, it is absolutely not a competitor. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, so so true, and it's, oh, and it's only honestly, it's only going to get more so. So yeah, yeah. Watch that space. Yeah. So drum roll. Drum roll. I don't can't do drum rolls. <laughs> I'll put that out later. So, <laughs> one of the trends that I see for twenty twenty five 
is a focus on ethics and social responsibility. So we're seeing this huge shift, even more so, in how consumers think about businesses these days. People aren't just looking at prices anymore. They want to know if companies are doing the right thing. So they're asking questions like, how do you treat your workers? What's your environmental impact? So this is where standards like um, ISO 26000, um, it's been around for a while, social responsibility, ISO 14001, again, been around for a while, but they're being elevated. This is where they come into, into play. So think of it, I suppose, as a roadmap for a business, just to be better, better corporate citizens. It's not just about having nice sounding policies, like companies actually need to walk the talk, do what they say, okay? We're, we're talking about real changes in that business in, environment. So it's that um, supply chain management as well. So all, all of that uh, it has to be able to be followed through. So uh, that, in, that also brings in sort of inclusive workplaces so that's that social responsibility all that inclusive workplaces comes into play with OH&S as well so it's all leading towards you know bet, better workplaces better places for people to work but better corporations as well so an example I found of this recently um, is a retailer in the US Patagonia outdoor clothing so they're not just selling jackets, for example. They actually show their customers their entire supply chain. So you can literally trace where your clothes have come from. So that's the kind of transparency that people are now looking for. So that is a huge change it's not just the bottom line anymore it's not just profits it's you know you need to think about your impact on people and the planet so that's a huge change well mm -hmm. I'm, I don't want to say it's a huge change now it's always been there but is it the newer generation they're expecting more you know um I went to a PSA, what's that, Professional Speakers Association uh, or is it Professional Speakers Australia, something like that. I, I, I went there probably six weeks ago and there was a lady there, um, you know, she was giving her talk. She's um, in fashion, okay, and the topic, and it was about corporate fashion, you know, how to, how to dress within your personality, you know, as, as a speaker and, and as, a, as someone working in corporate. But the discussion got around to fast fashion. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not, I was going to say, no, we all know, yeah, you know, who, which retailers are fast fashion. And really, you know, I, over the years, have been guilty of it as well. It's like, oh, oh, that's, oh, that's cheap. I might get five of those in different colours because, you know, those tops are $5 each. So, But then what I found, and I think I actually had this discussion with you recently, Kelly, yeah. I've started buying a, a higher quality clothing. And, again, not I'm not going to say that they're, it's still not fast fashion, but it's probably more becoming the slow fashion. And what I'm finding is that I'm respecting those clothes more because they cost me a lot more money to start with. And the ones that I got through fast fashion, it's like, oh, I haven't worn that in a while. Oh, I'm just going to chuck that in the recycling because, not, well, not recycling, in the <laughs> St. Vinny's, in the St. Vinny's <laughs> bin. So yeah. you seem to have a lot. I, and this is my own personal experience, I have a lot more respect for the clothes that I know I've had to work hard to buy. And, they're sl and so for me, it's slow fashion. And you know what? I have less clothes in the cupboard than I used to because before, you know, I could probably buy 10 items of clothing for the one item that I'm now buying. 
So mm-hmm. there was no respect for, for those clothes that I was buying. It was just, oh, it was sort of like like recycling. It was like, mm, I only paid five bucks for this. I'm just chucking it out. Like it is disgraceful, isn't it? We, we did have that discussion and I'm going through that um, at the moment, clearing out my wardrobe to do exactly the same thing. And there's a couple of items of clothing in there that I've bought that did cost a lot of money and I've never worn them. But I'm, I am very hesitant to put them in that um, Vinny's bag rather than compared to the others that I've just kind of thrown in there quite haphazardly. So, yeah. But I think Kelly, you can more than likely sell those too. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. what I've done in the past with, with the higher quality items. Yeah. You sell them because people are wanting those yeah. more so. So they have uh, more value so yeah, to speak. Yeah, longer term, yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. Look, as much as I love talking about fashion, I don't. Um, <laughs> I'll bring that back. We were talking about, um, yeah, corporate responsibility and, like, just general ethics uh, and social responsibility, and, and that's where that focus is. Um, aside from, obviously, that, that corporate side of things and what, the supply chain, et cetera, there is that real focus on ethics. And I was um, saw a comment this morning on one of our Facebook posts. Uh, it's Quality Month um, here, and one we asked our readers what how they define quality, what quality means to them and to their communities. Um, and there was a really good response there from our friend Kevin. Um, and I kind of expanded on his as well. People aren't. As far as ethics go, people uh, in that quality space aren't just looking for that good quality, that hardy, that long-wearing product um, like you're talking about there. They're also wanting a quality experience, and that's where where Kevin started off and I expanded on that. But they're wanting to know that if their experience isn't to that quality or that standard of their expectation, that your organisation, corporation, business, you as a a supplier are going to stand up and and be socially responsible, help them, support them, improve, give them that experience, own your mistake, own your poor service, acknowledge that and fix that and show show those people Mm -hmm. that actually – yeah, we, we didn't do the right thing, we'll own that, we'll fix that, and this is how we're going to do it. So it isn't just on that supply chain side of thing, it is about the ethics and the responsibilities you have to your consumers, customers, et cetera, as well. People really have that expectation. That's, yeah, well, that's really in ISO 9001. Yeah, it's and embedded in your everyday or should be. It should be, and what you're saying reminds me that um, it's about enhancing correct your cust yeah, and that's the word that the standard uses. But yeah, and as you're saying, how many people actually yeah take go that extra mile? Like going yeah. that extra mile is one of our values at Atoll. Yeah. Is go There's- the extra mile, do something yeah. that is not expected. Yeah, and and that's the thing is that. Yes, it's been written into a standard that as a business certified to 9001, you should be doing this. This is the requirement of being certified to this standard. And people have kind of been a bit, yeah, I I want good service. But now that, as you said, that expectation from the consumer around actually doing that, even outside of that 9001 space, um, yeah, yeah, there is that higher expectation across the board around ethics and social responsibility and everything that that means. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that was like you actually just wrapped that up. It's around, yeah, ethics and social responsibility is the first focus area for 2025 Mm -hmm. that I think you'll start to see even more change or requirements around might be a better word. So, you yeah, know, really understand. And, look, 26,000 is really quite an interesting standard, aren't they all? Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, you know, it's something that could you could um, purchase, read, 
and see how, and just like you have, Kelly, how it can align into maybe a more common or popular standard like 9001. Like, you know, they, they all follow the same high-level structure. So wouldn't, you know, there's my hot tip. You know, possibly, I'm not... I'll write it up as like an observation. It may be <laughs> beneficial <laughs> if you familiarise yourself with ISO 26000, that social responsibility, and see how you can align it to 9001. 14000, obviously, as the environmental standard, and I'm just assuming that maybe more people might be familiar with that. Um, because it is a standard that businesses do get certified against. And obviously it's a common one to integrate. But that could possibly be the action you could take for that. Yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's a good segue to the second one. Yes. This because, one is exciting and scary. Yeah, for well, and look, <laughs> I'm hesitant to back it up. But anyway, I've put it here because I thought it was interesting. So mm. something else to be aware of in 2025, ready, drum roll, is the revision of ISO 9001. I said it. I said it. So the way businesses are going to handle quality management is supposedly getting an upgrade. Okay, so I'm heavy on that word supposedly. Now, I can't guarantee anything because these things do tend to change. However, if this does go ahead and goes ahead in 2025 or it could take a bit longer, so just be aware and keep an eye out, we should expect some consideration and changes from the way we've done things in the past. I mean, think about what companies have dealt with recently. We've touched on this, supply chain issues, cyber yeah. threats, global disruptions, like you, you name it. So the old ways of doing things within a 9001 context really don't cut it anymore. It's like trying to use <laughs> an old Nokia flip phone um, in, a, in a smartphone world, really. So I actually think it's a great thing. But as I said, I have, I'm putting a waiver in here or a disclaimer. Um, yeah. As you know, and it happened recently, there was a review of 9001, yeah. but it wasn't approved, I think. Is that the right word? So <laughs> nothing, nothing came of it. But this is actually, you know, it's quite interesting because what you were saying, Kelly, when we talked about um, ethics and social responsibility and then my uh, suggestion for an action was to become familiar with how 26,000 and 14,001 integrate with 9,001 well essentially that seems to be what they're looking at doing um, with 9,001 just naturally and possibly you know the amendment that was this year I think it was the 26th of February mm -hmm. this year for yeah. um, considering um, how climate change has an impact on your context, um, so the context as well as your interested parties, that, that's a great example of how, you know, supposedly, seemingly standards that have nothing to do with the environment or social responsibility, et cetera, how it's sort of becoming, yeah, as one, you could say. So, like, I don't have that much more information on that. That's all I could find. And as I said, it could happen. It might happen. When it does, embrace it, you know, just like when, as I said, the amendments this year came in for for climate change. I know I did, I did a couple of posts on socials. I was confused at the time. I had mm. a, an opinion. But I also went in open-minded about it. Um, and that's, you know, as, as professionals working in the industry, yes, we can see improvements. Yes, maybe you can have a, have a whinge about it to your workmates um, and your work colleagues, but we need to find a way to make it work as well. So, you know, it's, it's really 
this update might take, well, look, take 9001 to the next level. It's already moved, I think, from a heavily documented checklist, checkboxy sort of standard. I think, you know, over time it has absolutely improved, but this is taking it to a whole new level. I know we're talking about 9001 specifically here, but as we have seen over the years, when that changes, other it has a flow-on effect to other, other standards as well. And particularly since um, the introduction of the high-level structure, as you said, there was a blanket mm -hmm. change to clause 4.1, 4.2 um, with that um, climate change um, statement in there and how how does this relate to this and it doesn't relate to this standard but it does relate to this standard why are they putting it in here but as we've learned in the what is it eight nine months since that's been launched is the how different businesses have interpreted and understood and applied that so yeah, really be open minded because we I remember the conversations we had was this yeah, this doesn't align with this, but hang on, this is really some people thought that it was a really explicit statement and others thought yep. it was really vague. Yeah. And then as you had that audit a couple of days later, um, the conversations you had from that um again showed something different. So again, think of this possible change as an opportunity to not just improve in this space, but across the board. Um, yeah. The reason I'm terrified is not because there's a new standard and a great opportunity. I just know that we have to update all of our course content. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. <laughs> so, yeah, but we're onto it. So we, we know it's coming, yeah. we can plan and prepare. Um, yeah. And look, and if it doesn't, then it doesn't. But yeah, it's it's always good to be across these things. and. Yeah, and yeah, and keep keep an eye keep an eye on what those changes are. I was um, talking to a client recently about well, how how do I stay on stay on top of things like? And as I said to you, Kelly, I, I mm. think I'm the biggest pain here at Atoll in sharing <laughs> in sharing articles and things because yeah, I subscribe to a lot of stuff and look. I can't read it all, obviously, but some things just stand out. A great one is HBR, Harvard Business Review. And it's quite interesting because it's not directly ISO related, but, but there's so much in there. It's about businesses, isn't it? Yeah. Which is essentially the world that we live in. ISO is about businesses, about businesses, um, implementing ISO management systems. It's about us as auditors, trainers, consultants, working with the people in the in the businesses. So what's hap what they're reporting on influences our clients and mm -hmm. our ISO world. So I'd highly recommend um, a HBR um, subscription. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm a member of um, ASQ, the American Society for Quality, and AOQ, so that's the Australian um, mm -hmm. Organisation for Quality. So that's very specific, but there's still great information that comes through. Oh, an exemplar global, yeah, um, put out good uh -huh. stuff. We're talking in the ISO world. If you are not subscribed to the ISO updates and you're in the yes. ISO world, <laughs> it's your first mistake. Um, oh. Yeah. That's Some the only the way I knew that there was a change to the standards on the 26th of February <laughs> this year. Yeah, yeah. I, it so, was a Monday morning and I opened my email and went, what? I mm. didn't know this was coming. And But even then we had to dig through and that's we had to dig through each individual standard that we offer to find that, hey, mm -hmm. they've told us about 9001, but they actually changed all of them. Yeah. So, well, I think yeah. it depended on what you were subscribed to. I'm subs Yeah, I've, I've got the blanket subscription I, and I found the same thing because for the same reason you um, subscribed to the HBR is, yeah, we specialise in four or oh, sorry, three particular, four particular standards, adding two more very soon. Um, but exactly what we were saying earlier about that integration between the others and how this standard impacts that standard and the families, like 
we might not train yeah. to every single one of them, but it is really interesting to see how yeah. everything does integrate together. So, yeah, if yeah. you're in the ISO space and you are not subscribed to the ISO updates, yeah, get onto it really quick. Yeah, because it's an interesting point because really they don't change very often. No. But. Yeah you, ne- you, yeah, you need to stay on top of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. But even, again, for that open-minded perspective, reading articles mm-hmm. about how other mm-hmm. organisations have implemented mm-hmm. or actioned things, it's, yeah, I yeah. can't absolutely. recommend that. All yeah, right, absolutely. we are okay. running it a bit behind to... today. Let's move. It's all right. It it's seems, so there seems to be a bit of a theme happening because oh, yeah. the third one, so another area, on the radar for 2025 trends is, and I've mentioned this, ESG. So you may have already heard it. Um, So it's environment, social and governance. Okay, so the world of ESG, and look, you can pull in 14,001 here, but this is really a topic, specifically ESG, that's heating up. And I mean that figuratively and literally. <laughs> We're seeing this massive push towards sustainability and environmental responsibility. That's completely changing how businesses operate. Um, you know, like we used to think going green was just about some, some recycling, turning off the lights, you know, like that, they, yeah. That's that's old news. So, you know, we're talking about, about much bigger things and ESG seems to be that big wrap of environment, social and governance. So, you know, it's it's a the corporate world's report card essentially. Yeah. So here's what's interesting because again, like I mentioned before with social responsibility, it's not about profit margins anymore. So investors in in companies they're asking questions even more so now about what your carbon footprint is um what's your plan to get to net zero what are you doing about waste um so when we talked about social responsibility um, and ethics we're talking about consumers with esg we're talking about investors okay so as I mentioned, we've got 14,001 already, but this ESG and particularly that reporting around ESG is what is really, you're seeing it so much on LinkedIn. It, it, you know, Kelly, you and I have had a Zoom with a gentleman that's written a book on ESG reporting. I wonder if we should check in on him and see if that's ready and published so we can put a link in here. Um, We're already getting inquiries from people about ESG reporting. So it it is the next big thing. So, you know, I'm not saying that you need to become an expert in it. You can, obviously, but if you're interested in adding another another standard to your tool belt, go go for it. Okay. So, um, yeah, if you, well, there's two things I threw out there. ISO 26000, social responsibility. ESG, and look, I, I'm not going to uh, say, say I'm not an expert in this because it's not, not something that I'm working in personally. Um, my great interest in it at the moment and has been this year is that um, there's no ISO standard currently around this. That's the first thing I went looking for, essentially. I read this amazing article on ESG in the Quality Progress magazine, which comes from the American Society of Quality. Um, and there's actually legislation. Now, when I read that article, the legislation had come into place in Europe, I think, and that gentleman we spoke to that's written the ESG report I think he mentioned about it coming into Australia as well but don't quote me yeah, at the time it was it was before parliament for discussion um with, oh, something, you know, I knew so. something was changing so look it's not an ISO standard I don't want to say yet but we've still <laughs> got 14,001 uh, there are sustainability um standards i want to say it's something 
in the 50,000s. <laughs> If you want to have a have a Google, there's some, like there's sustainability standards. I want to say fifty thousand or fifty five thousand. Nothing. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm having a quick look here, and there's. It's we'll have a look and driving we'll pop me it. to yeah. Most of, we've got social responsibility. It seems to be a little bit of a substandard. And look, I've just given it a bit of a and insight into how my brain works, it does seem mostly to be a subset of most of the others. Um, What's that? So we have yeah, environmental sustainability, social um, responsibility. It, it is more of a part of, part of the other families, I guess. Ah, uh, um, I see. Yeah. 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 Sustainable um, development in communities is a subset of mm, that. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So yeah, it, it's the and look, that's going to be yeah more common as well. It's sort of like um, ISO nine thousand has the whole ten thousand series where it really breaks down like culture, competency, documentation. So that's yeah. the path they've gone up. Yeah. So again, there's a great great opening um you know do some research in into it um i i recently went up that path with 9001 that's how i'm familiar with the 10,000 series it's like oh, it was like christmas i can imagine you opening that too. it was it was like oh my god look at this it's amazing so um again yeah really look into that esg world and particularly if your background is environmental sustainability, you know, here it is. Here's a great opportunity. So, you know, it's not my background. It's not my, um, you know, experience area, even though I do audit in 14,001. But if you're already working in this space, this is it, people. Yeah, this ESG, yeah. it watch watch this space that's this is going to be huge yeah yeah agreed Lots so are you ready for a little bit of a change in yeah? i'm excited oh look i was already excited with this one yeah <laughs> because Nerdle, as we called it yeah there, there sort of has been a a common theme so far with the three and mm -hmm. it I probably didn't realise it until I started opening my mouth and talking about it. But, you know, it's ethics and social responsibility. It's some changes possibly, potentially coming for 9001 that do wrap or integrate these uh, other elements into it. It's not just about, you know, the bottom line anymore and ticking boxes for 9001. And then the third one was around ESG, so environment, social and governance. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the whole sustainability space. All right. So and really you could wrap them up together. There's some consistent like consistent context there, even though they're separate things. But Being honestly, it's about making the world a better place. It's about making businesses better corporate citizens, as, as I said. Yeah, being a better corporate yeah. citizen. Yeah, so it's exciting. It can only, it can only be a good thing, yeah? Mm. Right. I like, so, I like moving away from profits and focusing on people. Exactly, exactly. And you and I had this discussion recently and, um, you know, we have – goals here of x amount of enrolments and i actually said to kelly it's said it's not our it's not our that's that's value. wrong it doesn't align with our values no it's wrong our our goals are and i mentioned one before go the extra mile is one of our values um five star customer service it's actually if 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 our goals are more are focused on our customer then the enrolments will just be an effect of that. It, it, it's the wrong way around if you're saying we want X amount of, of enrolments. Well, what are you doing about it? Yeah. Yeah, you can have all of the sales pitches and be the biggest, most popular rug store in the world and cheaper the <laughs> product. But, yep. um, but if your customers aren't happy, the, the best... 
best marketing is no marketing and word of mouth. Like yeah. if your customers need to be advocating for you and you need to give them a reason to advocate for you and that's yeah. not the bottom line. Absolutely, yeah. So just like, you know, social responsibility, ethics, um, ESG, it, it's, it falls under that same banner. You know, mm. you're doing the right thing as, as a corporate citizen, you're doing the right thing for your people and socially and the environment, you know, that those influences um, influence the bottom line essentially. It, it, mm. it comes from that um, and pushes forward to produce that outcome, not the other way around. Yeah. Okay, so the last one, which is a topic change, and I'm sure you've all been wondering where the heck this one's been. <laughs> um, so in 2025, guess what? We need to stay in front of emerging, changing technology. Ah, screaming. So what a great one to end on. So something that's really shaking things up like how technology is completely transforming the way we handle ISO certifications and compliance. Um, so it's not just your grandfather's audit process anymore, okay, complete game changer. So, you know, we used to have auditors flying around the world buried in mountains of paperwork. I remember great big lever arch folders of printed documents. So that is completely outdated. Okay. We're seeing this total shift to using AI and digital tools. So they're, they're at the forefront. So basically the ISO world, like the rest of the world, is getting a complete technical upgrade. Okay. So if you're in the ISO certification world, ISO professional, um, as I mentioned before, you need to stay on top of this, okay? It's, it's, it's not optional anymore. Um, I think that's if you're in the business world, to be completely frank, Jackie. I think if you are absolutely, in the business world, absolutely. Forget, which ISO, is, yeah, which is what we are. In. ISO yeah. is the business world. It's not, yeah. yeah, it's we need to understand business and the tools they use. And yeah. it's quite interesting, as I was saying that, I do remember when we moved to remote audits more regularly or officially during the pandemic, um, one of the um, requirements was that we had to demonstrate or show that um, as auditors we had the knowledge to, like, access things remotely. So, you know, conduct Zooms or Teams or Google Meets, whatever is more like easier for the client, how to access documents remotely, how to use different platforms. So, you know, when I'm conducting an audit, I need to pick up quickly the tools that they're using. Otherwise, they're just going to baffle me. You know, I'm pretty sure they probably baffled me in some areas, <laughs> but I need to understand, oh, that's what you use and, and ask the right questions. So if we're, if we're confused by what we're looking at and what they're showing us as auditors, how on earth are we, do we know what questions to ask? Okay, so that's from that perspective as an auditor, um, even a consultant, if you're going into a business and you're helping them to implement or improve their ISO management system or systems, you need to understand what tools they're already using because obviously that's the smartest way to do it um, is to, you know, if they're suitable, use the tools that they're already using. So you need to be able to have a, a degree of tech savviness about you, okay, and you need to stay up with it. You've got to give it a give it a try, okay. So you know, I mentioned um, remote audits before, and I do even say this when we do our virtual training. As you know, we've got, had this remote audit section in our training for decades, 
And it used to be this big, oh, imagine doing it like this. <laughs> but now, like when I get to that that slide or that content, I think, oh, why do we even have to have this here? Like this is just what we do. It just seems just like every day. It's a new normal essentially. So, mm-hmm. and look, we've got better tools to, to do it now. Um, but, you know, it, Honestly, all of these tools just makes what we do more efficient, smarter, faster, um, possibly yeah. more thorough. But as you said before, Kelly, we still need that human aspect to to double like double check as well. Like AI can pick up different patterns or potential issues. So it, it's so much. It's so, it's so much quicker than the human eye, essentially. So I'm thinking what I, oh, here, I've, I've made a list, so excuse me if I'm reading, but if you're listening, you don't even know if I'm reading a list, but if you're watching. <laughs> so in my research, I wanted to find some examples in our world of where AI or these digital technologies uh, sort of coming in into play so I found under document review so document review so analyzing documents so IBM have a, a tool someone a thing called Watson okay and as Kelly mentioned before we do get quite attached um, you know I love chatting to my chat GPT lady um, we have conversations all the time um, she's very nice to me but IBM have Watson. So they use Watson to review documents and it flags any inconsistencies as well as potential non-conformances. Okay. Um, the other thing in our world, sorry, Kelly. I was just going to say, just sorry, I I'm slightly going on a tangent here, but I just want to highlight the name of that um, GPT <laughs> is Watson. Watson was a sidekick. He was there to help and guide and support. He probably solved a lot of the problems, but Watson was the sidekick that assisted. So again, it's not doing all the work for you. It's helping. It's a very you good point. And yeah, coming. it's, it's very it's clever sort of, on their part. I'm sure yeah. that was intentional. So it's reporting by exception essentially, and then yeah. it, it helps the humans to know where to focus their time and energy on. Mm. Um, something else in our ISO world is risk assessment. Okay, so I found that, um, you know, AI, obviously, uh, there's AI algorithms, they analyze patterns in data, which helps to identify potential risks. So there is a CB, a a rather large global CB that uses AI, um, it's more in um, laboratories, um, to predict like equipment failures and maintenance requirements. So you know, it's not now just the human visual stuff. They've got things in place. Like it's it's proactive, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. And if they can pick up, oh, something's going to happen, this is wearing, this is running low, they're actually going to uh, fix it before it stops and, and breaks down and therefore um, work stops. So it's saving time and money. Yeah. Okay. Um, something else I thought of was, well, okay, what's the remote, what are remote auditing tools now? Are they any different to, you know, what I've used even as recent as this year with Zoom on a, on a phone or a tablet, but, you know, you can, there are companies that are using AI, um, for visual inspection. So they're using smart cameras as well as, um, videos, and then they can actually, so the videos do these remote inspections and so they get the the videos back but the power then is that the videos can then be analyzed blah 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 blah. that's that's me analyzing it (laughs) and it spits it it spits it out and and actually reports on any issues it's picked up in that visual inspection which I love this tool because think about that video that we've all seen at some point in time. Watch the people throwing the red balls. 
watch the people throwing this. Did you see the gorilla through the room? Yeah. No, yeah. none of us saw the gorilla. Yes. But the AI bot saw the gorilla because exactly. it was looking at everything because we can't look at everything. So, again, it's a tool to help you see yeah. what's not out there. Don't, don't be scared by it. Yeah, yeah. No, I thought that was clever. Like we've always used cameras and videos, but it's always, for me, it's been me. I'm on the other end of the tablet while they're walking around. But, you know, I can miss things. As you said, you know, with the AI, the analytics, it takes it to a whole new level. Yeah. Um, then I thought of, you know, just general monitoring. So, so you know, Clause 9 in the standards is around performance evaluation. So 9.1 or 9.1.1, depending on which standard you're looking at, is all about monitoring, measurement, analysis and evaluation. So I thought, well, what's out there around these monitoring systems? So, of course, there's AI that's tracking. This is a thing. It's tracking compliance in real time mm. it's not lag it's not oh we've pumped out twenty five thousand of these screws with this thread on it let's do a sample check it's actually checking at in real time as, as it goes okay so you know it measures uh, all of those quality metrics i suppose you could say yeah mm. um oh the other one was audit planning, okay, so audit plans, audit programs, audit schedules, so that's big for us. So um, funny enough, <laughs> I was playing in something yesterday um, in Notion, yeah. um, Notion Marketplace, so Notion is sort of like a project management tool but it's so much more, sorry, um, and it's got these amazing AI capabilities and you can actually sell um, your tools that you build in Notion in this Notion marketplace. So I was doing a having a sticky beak around what was on Notion to do with auditing and 9001 and there is actually there's an AI tool on there that this guy has created within Notion that helps him to figure out his audit schedules based on risk and resources. Okay. Which is interesting because I'm sitting here going, oh, we, we were the first AI in this. We had our amazing Excel spreadsheet that if we change this, it does that. But AI removes the if we change part. AI does mm -hmm. that a little bit for us. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. It's yeah. just an example so of automating that. Absolutely, absolutely. So it takes I thought, to the second. Right? Yes, and it's just so cool. I was sitting here going, "Oh my god, that is so clever!" So there's already this stuff is already out there, and this is all I did is I just went looking for this this stuff, and I'm just this, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I just yeah, I okay. I just had a play and went looking for this particular stuff. So. Um, the other one I found was, oh, your reports, your audit reports. Who likes doing their audit reports <laughs> after an audit? Oh. You can read their notes after an audit report. Goodness. <laughs> yeah. So I make messy notes within my audit report. Um, wouldn't it be great if I could chuck it in some, into something and it could do my audit report for me? But there mm -hmm. are, I did find that there's AI tools the key word here is assisted writing tool. So they use that um, natural language processing. So it helps to make it sound normal. And I, I, the big thing with audit reports is consistency. It's very difficult to get report consistency even between human auditors. And, you know, for me, I'm a very bullet point audit report person. I've read other audit reports that, you know, they could have written a novel they were that flamboyant and you know and you know there needs to be some consistency so there are tools out there for report generation and I have no doubt they're just going to get better and better and better but so they're just a, you know a few things that I found recently while I was having a play around but a big note here and Kelly stole my thunder 
on this a bit earlier. Yeah. A big Petition. note here, I just thought I'd drag people through the mud first and then let them know, but you sort of gave it away at the beginning. So the, <laughs> the big note here is that all of these tools are here just to assist us as human auditors. They're not here to replace us. So don't run away in fear. You need to embrace it and figure out, well, how can I use this to, to support me and my career? So we still need the human element to make decisions, to make final decisions, okay? We still need the human there to understand the context of what we're doing, all right? Um, we still need the human there to interpret any situations that might be a little bit more complex that might feed into the context also we still need the human auditor to build the relationships with the client for goodness sake okay that's so important and that's a whole other um podcast on um you know our personal behaviors as auditors all right and of course you know, our sampling, our decisions as auditors is all is, is judgment based for ISO auditors. So that's based on our knowledge, skills and education. So that feeds into that decision making. But these tools help us to bring everything together and then we can make these decisions. So please don't forget, as a human auditor, you are still needed. You just need to embrace these tools. I don't think we can highlight that statement enough. Uh, tools, 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 support. Yeah, make, yeah. You, yep. uh, look, I don't want to say never, but it is unlikely that an AI bot, whatever its, its capabilities are or its specialty is, it's not going to be able to understand the nuances of the human interaction relationship, possibly yeah. tone of voice. Look, that's what I use it for. Make me sound nicer today. I'm in a bad mood. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I can't, and I'm having this discussion with my other half at the moment. He's a little bit apprehensive about this space for all of those reasons, but very quickly seeing the benefits. I, I, as soon as you flip the hype the hysteria whatever you want to call it from the media about ai is going to take your job away and realize that it is just a tool and it is just to support you then the opportunities um in all of these spaces um really are endless for you so Absolutely. flip the mindset look exactly and this is just my opinion um but as auditors, you need an open open mindset. If you're going in to your clients and you're whinging and moaning and, oh, no, I, I'm not using that, that's too hard, oh, what happened to the real people, you know, just generally, you know, being negative about these technology changes, businesses don't want an auditor that has that mindset i'm sorry they they want someone that as kelly said sees the opportunities they want someone with a positive mindset because you are there to identify opportunities within their business mm -hmm. okay and if if you have that closed mindset you're really cutting yourself off one to those technologies but two again it's a personal behavior all right, and people, as we said, connect with people. So you do need to get on, on board with it. I'm really sorry. Or I'm almost. retire. Retire. <laughs> <laughs> set up an AI, a chatbot, to set up all of your finances and get the money yes. rolling. So yes, you exactly. Oh, hang on, then you, <laughs> you, you need to embrace. Look, no matter what which option you choose, you need to embrace yeah. AI and technology. Yeah. Yeah. And I know it's a scary thing. I know I might have sound yeah. like a yeah, a horrible person for saying saying some of these things, but I, you know, that's why I said at the beginning that anything that I've gone through with change, it has been terrifying. Mm. Um and it's taken me time to embrace and you know, it, But here's my question for you, Jackie. 
Have you ever gone through change, positive or negative, that has not in some way or another had a beneficial and positive outcome long term? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. And I, I do recall even thinking, oh, actually, that's probably something I wasn't expecting. That's exactly that's a good thing. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Even negative negative change has a positive impact somewhere down the line. Yeah. I'll remind you of that in the future, Kelly. That's okay. <laughs> I will remind myself. No. Excellent. Okay. Well, we I'll have do got a wrap well up and today. summarize. Yeah, um, I know. I thought it would go on a bit longer because it's a it's a really good good topic, um, mm. obviously. And um, yeah, make sure you come along to the webinar in January, um, or if you're watching this after January, look at the recording. I think yeah. you can. Yeah. So, what did we cover? Yeah. What what are the focus for 2025 trends? It's on ethics and social responsibility, a possible revision of ISO 9001. You can see I'm a bit scared to back that up. Sustainability, ESG, so environment, social and governance. Um, it pulls that environment in. Um, and these emerging technologies, so obviously the whole AI side of things. So... As always, before I hand it back to Cal- Kelly, your name's Kelly, not Kelly, I'd like to close with stay curious and always lead the standard. By staying curious and leading the standard, you'll continually find new opportunities for growth and excellence in your career. And that statement is no better said than on this topic. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, what a conversation. We have mm-hmm. covered some major trends, um, career opportunities to keep in mind. And as we head into 2025, I'll try not to twitch, figure out my Christmas shopping. Um, <laughs> whether it's rise to ethical business practices, um, the potential upcoming revisions to 9001 and what that means, um, the growing role of sustainability and ESG, it is very clear that the ISO world is evolving rapidly. Uh, And then, of course, as we said, tech, remote audits, AI-driven assessments, digital tools, changing how we work. All of those things wrap up today's episode of Lead the Standard. Thank you again for joining us. Next week, we'll be back with episode 27, Audit Pass, Culture Lasts. And I will emphasize the the, um, S on the end of that, Audit Pass, Culture Lasts. Not last to. It's a really interesting headline. Um, it is all about how building a strong culture creates lasting impact beyond compliance. Uh, and again, another conversation that I am really looking forward to. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Keep leading the standard. And remember, 2025 is just around the corner. So start preparing now and we will catch you all next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you.